Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Matt coming to you from St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, where we have just completed the glorious fourth anniversary mass for the Samoran Pontificum pilgrimage. John Rao, what do you think? Well, it was nice to see something good in St. Peter's for a change. That's for sure. Yeah, one had the impression that, you know, it's not the impression, it's true that this uh, mass that we saw today was, uh, was the mass for which this magnificent building was built in the first place. Absolutely. It was a combination of beauty with the music and with the liturgical action, and also with sound doctrine from the homilist, who spoke as though the Declaration of Religious Liberty had never been uh, issued and, um, and made it clear that Christ had to be king over not just individuals but nations as well, especially in our own day, which is, as he said, diabolical. Not so many sermons about the kingship of Christ these days in the old Basilica of St. Peter, am I right? No, 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 unless there are traditionalist priests who at daily masses are making that kind of statement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's such a beautiful event that we just experienced with, with traditionalists really from all over the world. Yes. It's a magnificent representation here. Thousands and thousands were here. But I couldn't help but compare it. We're, we're here in the Basilica and right across the piazza here is the stop of the, the Vatican press office where there's a press, office, a press conference that just, just got uh, completed a few moments ago. And uh, the news from there is not so good. No, no, no. Well, uh, how could it be good? Uh, what you've got there functioning is modern democracy uh, in action now in the bosom of the church. And what that means is that an oligarchy dominates with its own particular program, this one a diabolical program, with not just the backing but the encouragement of what amounts to a tyrannical pope. Mm -hmm. You know, we were at the press conference yesterday, which was an extremely disheartening event all the way around. And I think it was the Belgium Cardinal or Archbishop who he kept using this term new church. He said we're starting a new church now. We are no longer the church of judgment. We do not judge people. We are the welcoming church. And he, and he said uh, the, the word of the synod was sensitivity, I think. Anyway, what do they, what do they mean by this new church? Uh, what they mean is a church without Christ. Uh, back at home, I remember at one point after the council, the pastor of uh, a local church said that what we were building was the church of no hassles. And this is uh, not just the church of no hassles, this is the church completely without Christ. Mm -hmm. This has been something that people have been talking about really since the beginning of the 1800s, this evolving church. It's always the same argument, it's always the same stupidity, it always has the same vinyl goal, get rid of Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting, and get rid of Christ, get rid of moral theology, apparently, because right. we really heard nothing about mortal sin. We heard nothing about the fact that divorce is a, is a sin, to get divorced and remarried is a sin, that homosexuality, at least the acts, are sinful and so forth. Heard nothing about that. Heard nothing about the millions of babies who, who have been slaughtered in the wombs over the past year. It was it was a very strange thing, and, and yet this was supposed to be all about the family. It just... Uh, yes, but that's again a typical modern instance of what happens with such oligarchies. You have a synod, you have democracy. Democracy means that there is no popular input on anything. You have freedom. It means that you have a tyrant that rules over you. You have a, you have a synod on the family. It doesn't mean that you talk about the family. It means that you talk about the destruction of the yeah. family. It's always, always of that sort. And the only thing that puts an end to the nonsense for them is lunch. <laughs> you know, you mentioned democracy and they kept on talking about how they're listening to the voice of the people and they're listening and listening and listening. But the irony, John, seems to be that those people to whom they're listening have lost the faith to a large extent or they're wandering or they're, they're confused about what being Catholic even means thanks to the policies of the Second Vatican Council, the spirit of Vatican II and so forth. So what sense does it make to pull these poor souls who really have no Catholic identity left at all, to pull them, listen to them, and then base policy on, what you're, on the feedback that you're getting from people who are basically shepherdless sheep? Yeah, it's all an absolute fraud. Uh, for one thing, I suppose it is just that you poll the people who are the congregation for your church without Christ. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, they're not polling them anyway. They are the prophetic leaders, the oligarchy that's pushing this program. And they already know what the people that they're supposed to be polling want. Mm -hmm. So that as a consequence, it's, it's a, a yin-yang that has no meaning and no end. Almost like they brainwashed the folks for the last couple of, of decades, and then now they're they're taking the census to see what the, what the people think. But they already taught them what to think, which isn't very much in terms of Catholic of Catholicity. Yes, and absolutely. And once again, I insist, as they give permission for sin, they also get a nice junket to Rome and good lunch. <laughs> That's it. Tell you what, John, I'm going to catch up with you later because I know you're a busy man here in Rome with so many contacts and friends that you need to see. But let's 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 talk some more about the synod later this afternoon. I want to give you the last word on this event because I think the, the folks back home want to hear something positive and today what happened
happened in the Basilica of St. Peter was so positive, seeing the traditional Latin Mass celebrated in all of its glory. So I'll give you the last word. What do you think of as far as the impact of that on the, mo on the movement or on what's happening here in Rome? Well, the, the impact just on me personally uh, was one of, once again, making me want to take out my gun and get on the battlefield. Uh, it ended with a, a magnificently sung rendition of Christus Vinci, Christus Regna, Christa, Christus Imperat. Once again, a total rejection of the Declaration on Religious Liberty. And as a consequence, you want to be a soldier of Christ. Mm. Yeah, exactly. John, thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. I'm Michael Matt with John Rao at the Basilica of St. Peter here in Rome. We'll talk to you next time.